And why are you waiting until January 1st? You are worth so much more than that. Don't wait till January 1st to make a resolution and then quit it four weeks later. Do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 12 of the SRB podcast. We got Mark Smaller on the show. He is a single parent to three kids and certified in personal training and advanced sports nutrition. Mark, we briefly spoke on the phone today. Let's start off with a pretty practical question. The United States is by far the most obese country in the world. And a lot of that stems from either a lack of education, maybe a lack of desire to learn about which foods are good for you. How does a person distinguish quality food from bad food? Good question. Um, I think that first off to to comment on what what you said about the most obese nation, there's there's a number of reasons for that. You have to consider the amount of um, immigration we have, uh, people bringing their their, dietary uh, habits and and nostalgia because eating is is nostalgic so they've got their their type of of cuisine and um sometimes you know people are coming in very very poor and so they're they're eating what they can and that's not always the healthiest thing so there, there's a huge dynamic there but i think the biggest reason really is uh money frito-lay and pizza hut and coke they all have so much money to advertise and uh, they have all these commercials showing people just having a blast eating their toxic food. And we have so much disposable income now, so we have the money to go out. I remember when I was a kid uh, in the 70s and 80s, if we went to McDonald's or Burger King, which hopefully back then I think they had real meat and no high fructose corn syrup in their ketchup, we would. If, it was like once a month. I mean, all my friends from the 80s would joke, we're like, yeah. you, we used to go to McDonald's three times a year. Now people go three times a day. So that also yeah. has to, you know, a lot to do with the obesity. But anyway, um, your question was, remind me, it was about how to determine what foods are bad for you or good for you and what healthy alternatives are? Yeah, pretty much. So someone I, I've been following for about 10 years, I absolutely love her. Her name is the Food Babe, Food Babe. And she says her husband gave her that name. She's amazing. She... Uh, goes after Kraft, she goes after Chick-fil-A, she goes after Pepsi, and she tries to tell them, hey, here are the ingredients you use in Europe, which are a lot healthier. You don't use all the banned in- ingredients that are uh, cancerous or promote ADHD and all those other things. Um, so why don't you use them here? She's great. She's always posting alternatives. And on my Instagram, I will repost her stuff. Um, I think it's a great, great uh focus to have right and i've I've done that before especially here in dallas uh before the super bowl the last two years i've gone to the health club i belong to and i show them uh typical oreos and coke and chips and queso and i bring in and i and i let them all taste it and drink it and then i bring in the healthier alternatives that i picked up from either trader joe's or um whole foods or even aldi and some of the local stores they have the alternatives they're there um, the easiest way I would say to identify it is pick up your standard item, let's just say potato chips, and go pick up the organic potato chips. That's a small positive difference you can make. They're still fried, starchy, yeah, but there's going to be about 15 ingredients on the regular chips and say five on the organic potato chips. So the smaller the list of ingredients or the shorter the list, generally that food's going to be healthier. Mark, I do want to play devil's advocate because you briefly mentioned it. One complaint I swear to hear a lot is, you know, I'm on a tight budget. Money's low right now. Let's say in your case, I got three kids I got to feed. I just can't eat nutrient-rich, healthy foods because I can't afford it. A lot of that isn't true, I mean, at least in my opinion. What what would you say to them? Right. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely not true, and um, I always – I like to, to throw this out there. I say, well, you can either pay your doctor or you can pay the grocer. I'd rather pay the grocery store than my doctor. I never go to the doctor. I never do checkups. I'm 55. Both my parents died in their 70s. They had cancer and heart disease and on and on and on. Um, so people can't say, well, you have good genes. I, I don't think I do. 
but I'm always going to be cancer free. I'm always going to be height weight proportionate uh, because, you know, um, I can't remember who said it. Gosh, I want to say it was Socrates or uh, no, no, no. Well, gosh, I can't remember. Some Greek philosopher said, let medicine, let food be thy medicine. And I think it was um, Hippocrates, which is, uh, you know, where we get the word. One of those. One. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he said something very similar too. So, I mean, you are what you eat. Um, and there are healthy alternatives out there that aren't as expensive. Plus, here's the beauty of food being expensive. You're not going to eat as much. If you go buy a bag of chips at Walmart for $2, they're like, yeah, it's $2. Let me inhale the whole bag. But if you buy organic potato chips, it's a smaller bag and they're $4 good. Your brain should say, don't eat so much. I got to make those last. And that's a good thing. Uh, but there's plenty, especially yeah. nowadays, the big companies, they don't want to lose their market share. So they're making healthier ingredients. And I, I was waiting uh, for when I could bring this. But this is this. Okay. So this is a great example. These are called CTE. Uh, they're, they're basically, I have a sweet tooth. Okay. So these are called churro strips and they're grain free. So they're gluten free. Uh, avocado oil, uh, organic sugar. I mean, there's like five ingredients. And it tastes good, right? Because most it people think amazing. If you it's like it's cinnamon and sugar, you like um, whatever they're called, the uh, churros or the, the the little fried things that Taco Bell sells that that are are just like these that the you know the fried cinnamon sugar stuff. These are amazing, and I think these are three dollars and fifty cents at Target for this giant bag. Yeah. I mean, so people, there are yes, there are certain things that are going to be more expensive. There's a joke they call Whole Foods Whole Paycheck. I get it. But they also have their 365 brand, and, and they're very reasonable. And I've posted on my Instagram when they have things on sale. They had The other day they had pre-made uh, wild-caught salmon, not farm-raised, wild-caught salmon, mashed potatoes, and green beans for like $7.99. You throw it in the oven, and you're done. You, you can't even go to, I call it, sick filet for $7.99. So you just yeah. got to look. But it, it's a valid point, but don't let that be a stumbling block, block or excuse. There are ways around. I, I think I think cooking too is important, right? Because you can go to some home. really nice steakhouse, buy a sixty dollar filet mignon, but then you go to the grocery shop, you can get the same one that you can cook for fifteen twenty bucks. Absolutely. And my son is a chef uh, in, at a real famous restaurant in downtown Dallas. Um, I've cooked, you know, for my kids the, the whole 13 years I've had custody of them. And we just, I mean, I'm blessed. My mom taught me how to cook. Um, you know, we're Chicago Italian. We know how to flavor things. But it's so funny because every once in a while they'll say, well, let's just go out. And I only have one at home now. My, my boys are in their 20s now on their own, thank God. But we'll, we'll still all go out to eat. And it'll be like $200. I'm like, guys, I could have bought so many Jeez. delicious to your point, organic, healthy groceries and make food at home. And then, you know, what will happen the next Saturday. We'll all cook at home and say, yeah, this was much, much, much better, much more affordable and much more delicious. Yeah, totally. You briefly mentioned it, um, but you work a lot with people who, who want to lose weight. You told me on the phone. Mm -hmm. what, what's your biggest piece of advice to them? Um, I don't have just one biggest. I would say the th Everyone's different. Yeah. The two or three I start off with. So there are some fundamental ones. Okay. So important, fundamental, biggest, those, those all align. So one is I talk about, um, words really have a lot of power. So I, I tell people, let's not talk about losing weight because no one ever went on social media and said, I lost my job or I lost my dog to cancer, or I'm so excited guys. I got great news. I lost my car keys and I missed a life-changing meeting. So no, but your brain is pre-wired and programmed to prevent loss and know that loss is bad. No one likes losing. So let's not talk about losing weight. I say, let's talk about getting fit, getting sexy, getting strong, beating disease, being a great role model. Those are all things that fire people up. So that's the first thing I talk about. Most people are like, okay, cool, I get behind that. Um, the second thing I tell them is it's only gonna be as hard as you allow it to be. There are people that when their backup is up against the wall or when they get diagnosed with cancer, boom, they quit cancer, they quit smoking cold turkey. Um, you know, there, there are people, I, I had a woman, one of my first clients back in Chicago, she needed to lose 50 pounds in 90 days because she was always fat through high school. She got this promotion. She wanted, she knew she was going to be on stage. So she was uh, just more aware of her self-conscious of her weight. And she said, 
this is a kickstart, but I want to show up at this high school reunion looking great. Man, she, I think she went on water and salad for 90 days. She lost about 42 pounds in a healthy way. I was there to guide her, but oh man, it was amazing. I was so excited for her. And she was just so, you could see her proud and confident. So you can do it. It's only as hard as you make it. But people really kind of wait until that moment where desperate times call for def- yeah. desperate measures. Yeah. yeah. That's where you got to hand them a Goggins book. Yeah. 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 And, and I love like, you know, Goggins has talked about it, right? We, yeah. we, and I post about it. I, I think I posted in this just a few months ago in July. I said, all right, we're halfway through the year. What's your New Year's resolution? And why are you waiting until January 1st? You are worth so much more than that. Don't wait till January 1st to make a resolution and then quit it four weeks later. Do it now. Yeah. Don't wait till no, your no. back is up against the wall. Although, you know what? I've seen, like you said, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I've seen people who they get a prognosis or something happens and they make that change. Yeah. What's, let me ask you, what's a good source of protein? Because everyone says you got to eat protein. You got to get your protein. In. What's, what's a good source of protein? And then what's kind of like something you try to stay away from? My first response to that would be bison. Bison is absolutely delicious. It's higher in protein per gram and lower in cholesterol and fat than ground beef. And it's just, it's clean. Their diet is clean. They're not as heavily processed as cattle. So that would be my number one. Um, Number two, I would probably say um, wild caught fish. Um, And then maybe grass fed beef, definitely grass fed over conventional. So yes, what do I stay away from? I never, ever eat American chicken. Number one, to me, it's gross. Uh, and number two, unless it's, a lot of it, yeah. it, unless it's organic, it's banned in Europe. The entire EU bans domestic chicken. Yeah, I see your eyebrows. But no, most people don't realize that. Do you know why? Because it's covered in bleach. It has too high of a bleach residue for EU specs. So it's banned. So why would I eat something that's banned in a country that's way healthier, way thinner yeah. than than, than America. Uh, and the other thing is conventional beef. Um, we, I mentioned to you on the phone, I've been in food distribution for 16 years, uh, work for a very large distributor, and we have conventional garbage and we have really, really clean stuff. Um, we actually have our own line of products that um, it says skips the unpronounceables. So it stays away from all the preservatives and pink slime and all that other stuff. And um, so I, I try to focus on those types of foods and beverage products, and I stay away from the ones that have tons of ingredients or commodity products. If if people saw, and there's documentaries out there, there's Food Inc., uh, there's Forks Over Knives. If you saw the way animals were treated, it, it's it's heartbreaking. But oh, oh, I've seen those. Here's yeah. the other thing I tell people is because people go, oh, I don't want to know about it. So to your point earlier, you said. Are we uneducated? Do we not want to be educated? Do we want to turn a blind eye? I get that. But the one thing I'll tell people is if an animal is being mistreated, then it has tons of hormones and stress hormones being released into its blood. As the animal is then killed and processed, all of those stress hormones, those additional hormones are now in that meat that you're going to eat. So not only does... um, a, a, a an animal that's been humanely raised, fed, and slaughtered tastes better, and is the meat more tender, but it's better for you. And I've never met someone who disagrees. I, I know people that'll say, ah, organic banana, regular banana, I can't tell the difference. Okay, that, that's fair. But if you go to a ranch and eat a delicious piece of meat where the animal was taken care of humanely, they, they I know a ranch up in Colorado, it's called Meyer Ranch. You can buy this online and you can buy it uh, in the grocery store. It's called Meyer Ranch. Their beef is divine. And it's not necessarily organic or any of that, but it is It is grass-fed. Some of it is grain-finished where they, they fatten it up a little bit. But they actually play classical music in the fields. They name the cattle. They walk them to the pen. They're not all slaughtered one at a time. It's I know for some people, you know, especially vegan or people who are pro, you know, uh, just, just well, animal welfare. They don't want to hear about it, but we, we do need that to, to feed the, the billions of people. So my point is that Meyer Ranch, when you taste that beef, because it was just the, the, the cattle, the animal was treated humanely, 
And not only are you what you eat, you're what the animal ate as well. I'm telling you, this meat, it just melts in your mouth. It doesn't have that weird iron aftertaste. It's not gristly. And I know it's better for you because of the grass that they're eating. It's just much better on their system. You're getting more carrageenan. You're getting more B vitamins. So that's why grass-fed beef is so much better for you. Yeah, and I I see one thing that a lot of vegetarians and vegans are doing right now, which I see, is that they're substituting foods and, and certain fluids with some sort of medication or vitamin. What's your take on that? Can you sort of uh, replace food with medication, I guess? No, no, not at all. And I'm so glad you brought that up for a couple of reasons. One is, and, and I know someone through the food industry, he's a broker for a, a vegan company. And mm. I've looked at the ingredients because I eat pretty clean and I'll, I'll eat a lot. I just had some plant-based uh, chicken nuggets for, for lunch earlier because I don't do chicken and I just had a taste for them. But there's a lot of soy. There's a lot of salt. There's a lot of garbage in it. And he said, I, oh, I know. I'm, I'm not a healthy eater. I'm just a vegan junk food eater. So there's a lot of stuff. You really have to watch the fat, especially from coconut oil and things like that. But I don't like this phrase, but if you do apply everything in moderation, then you're less likely to you know, damage yourself and, and raise your blood pressure and clog your arteries and all that stuff, whether you're, you're a meat eater or plant-based. But no, it's so interesting. So um, a friend of mine from Chicago called, his wife's having issues. She passed out a couple of times. And the doctor said, you need some, some B vitamin supplements. And I said, absolutely not. A supplement is there to enhance what you're already doing. You have to, mm -hmm. if you, if you just start taking B vitamins, but you're still a vegan, you're not doing anything. You, that might, it might do this much, not even that. It has to have something to bind onto the original material. So if you're low on B vitamins and you're taking a B vitamin supplement, like I said, there's nothing for it to bind onto. But if you have a little bit of animal protein, there are some bee-oriented plant proteins, but you have to take a whole bunch of them. It's best to eat them raw. Anyway, um, to answer your question, no, you can't. A supplement, and I'm so glad you said that, a supplement is there to, again, enhance what you're already doing. If you're eating poorly, it's not, it's not going to do anything. But if you're eating well and you're still not getting the proper nutrients, number one, you got to check your gut health. Number two add some supplements and try different ones. There's so many different brands out there and some brands are more effective than, than others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mark, you, you told me earlier, uh, I mean, on the phone, on the show that you're 55 years old. First off, you look great. Thanks. Uh, let, me, let me tell you that. But you tell people um, that it's important to work out. Right. But in the same breath, it's important to enjoy your workout right. and, and to do with what most closely aligns with uh, the exercises that you like. Why is that important? Uh, it's important because we're not all Goggins. You know, Goggins loves the challenge. If, if yeah. something is difficult to do, and, and there's a lot of people that we know that enjoy that. If you, if you tell me, no, you're not going to be able to do that, I'll, I'll work really, really hard to prove you wrong. And then I'll stop though. So you wanna find something that you actually enjoy doing. Um, some of my clients are like, I don't even like working out. I just worked all day. Why do I wanna work out? I said, all right, great, let's play. Let's have some fitness fun. Let's box, let's jump rope, whatever it is. Um, many, many years ago, uh, Brett Michaels, the singer for Poison was on the show, The Apprentice. And he actually won a competition because they, they were in, I think, New York, and the two teams had to find uh, some, some, a, a new campaign for, I think it was like Bally's or one of the health club people. And he came up with a dance that involved anything you wanted to do. And, and it's Brett Michaels. He's a rock star. So some of it was kind of like sexual. It was thrusting. Some of it was like boxing. Some of it was dancing. But they actually won. The Bally's people liked it or whoever the, the you know company was. They liked it because they said... The point is to get people to do things they like. And I, I remember sitting there thinking, he stole my idea. But anyway, because I've had this forever. Yeah, go find stuff that you like to do. I mean, some people, they balk at jumping rope. But then when I get them to do it because they hate running, they're like, oh, my gosh, I love this. I, I just did my cardio in less than 10 minutes. Um, I think I mentioned yeah, I'll ask my clients when I first sit down with them, if we had to do something for the next hour and all it was was either yoga, boxing, 
or lifting weights, which would you do and why? And I really listen to their answer and then come up with movement and exercises that are around their their why. It's not so much the what, but it's the why. Some people are just like, I just hate running. Or I've, to be honest, I've had pretty large people say, I can't stand jumping up and down and moving because I, blah. And I'm like, good, feel, yeah. the, feel the change. So we're going to do that at the end of the workout so that you can feel that uncomfortable change, uh, that uncomfortable pain. And then you're going to make that change when you leave. And you're going to be like, I'm not going to get that Dr. Pepper because I can't stand this feeling of this, you know, blood. Yeah, you, you really try to notice it once you work out. Uh, even for someone like me, I'll, I'll go to the gym, I'll get on the treadmill and I'm like, shit, I should, I shouldn't have had that crep from two days ago. Cause you, you really yeah. start to feel the repercussions. And then I guess that motivates you to, to eat healthier too. Mark, one thing I was going to ask you is, in the same breath, there are a lot of people who they just say, you know what? I don't like anything. I don't like going on a treadmill. I don't like jump roping. Talk about the importance of just starting just because eventually you can develop an interest and a passion right. for things once you go through the, the start. Mm -hmm. So what they're probably experience, experiencing is um, something else that they're enjoying, whether it's wasting hours on social media, uh, taking a nap, uh, laying on the couch, playing with their pet. Uh, it could be something that's not negative. It could be reading. It could be, um, you know, staying late at the office and, and putting on those extra hours to get promoted or make those sales. But they're replacing a measly 4% of their day. One hour is 4% of your day. So that's the first thing you, you, you've got to be able to find that and not make excuses and say, you know, even if it's 30 minutes, it's getting started and go walk, do that to yourself, do that for right. yourself. You owe yourself In that. Perfect action. Yeah. yeah. So replace a, a habit. I'm going to call it a bad habit with a good habit, you know, try and stay in balance. If, if you really, if most of us and Goggins talks about this, if you uh, wrote down how you spend your day, you know, you'd be shy. You'd be like, oh my gosh, six hours goofing around on my phone, three hours playing Xbox, four hours doing this, blah, 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 blah. Find one hour a day, 4% of your day and go do something. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, I'm fortunate I also play the drums. So that gets my heart rate up and keeps me going. Maybe learn yeah. to play a new instrument. Go play with some little kids. I, I don't know. There's there's a million things you can do. And there's if you like video games, there's so many cool video games out there. And there's these virtual reality ones where you put on the Oculus and stuff. And you can dance and you can walk. I mean, come on. There's a hundred things you can do. You can go pretend you're Spider-Man or Spider-Woman and, and burn calories. Yeah. It's really just getting out of that rut. Just kind yeah. of like snapping out and of it. Finding and something it. else that releases those positive chemicals to keep you going. One thing I tell people my age a lot is check your screen time. Yes. You, you, you'll be surprised at the and, amount of and time. Apple does it. My, my, on every Sunday I get it. I, luckily I was down 11%. I was thankful. Yeah. M Mark, I do. I, I got two more questions uh, for you before I let you go. Mm -hmm. First off, what advice do you have for aspiring nutritionists or, or people who, who want to do what you do? Um, the first one might sound a little harsh, but it's, you've got to be the best version of yourself. You've got to be in shape. Uh, there is next to my health club is a smoothie shop and the woman who owns it is probably 260 to she's probably like yeah. five, three, 260 pounds. She's got a giant butt, giant thighs. And I'm like, why would anybody? And I know if I went on Google and posted a review, people would whine and cry and probably report my, my, yeah, no, no, no. Like, why would I go to a smoothie shop? And she, it's, I think it's called like the healthy spot or the healthy shake. What if you're the owner and she's like, oh, I live on this stuff. Well, then I'm not drinking it. So, you, and I see that all the time. I see, and, and me and a couple of my trainer buddies were like, we actually laugh at people. We're like, why would you train with that person? She weighs 275 pounds. I don't know how she gets clients. And that's just yeah. the truth. So if you can't model what you're preaching, then you shouldn't be doing it. Um, the second thing is you've got to be, now people are going to say, wow, this guy's not very compassionate. You do have to be compassionate. You have to give some sort of empathy. You do have to understand because um, some people do have 
uh, genetic struggles. Some people have families that pressure. I, I know young people that live at home and their families uh, make fun of them for eating healthy. So that's, that's a struggle. So yeah, that sucks. You got to be willing to be a support system. You got to be patient. You got to be encouraging. You got to be knowledgeable. And really the, the key is listening. The other thing is you've got to document results. I uh, take pictures of my clients. Um, I, I talk to them. Okay, what are you going to eat this weekend? You know, if it's a Friday, what, what are you going to eat this weekend? And they'll tell me, and I'm like, wow, that's a huge improvement over what you told me two months ago. And you can just see them smile. So I try to end each session on a positive. Yeah, and how about journaling too? Is that something you do a lot? Me personally, yes, I do. Why do I look that crazy? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, do. I, I journal, do. yes, I journal. Yeah. But I ask my clients to journal as well. Yeah, because they're the only ones who really know. It, nothing makes me angrier than when a client blows off an appointment than um, when they lie. Um, you know, we, yeah. we're working out, working out, working out, and their weight starts going up. And it's not muscle replacing the fat. And I'm like, um, all right, what are you, nothing, I swear, I haven't been to Starbucks or Chick-fil-A in, in six months. That's and crazy to me because they're, I mean, a lot of people pay for a trainer and they're trying to impress that trainer. But they're not they're not getting better themselves mm -hmm. that's mind-blowing yeah. but it, and they'll post true. up on social media i hate to be like a college but they'll post up i'm like you posted last week that you ate three pounds of chili cheese fries at tgi fridays oh crap that's right you follow me um oh, yeah shit. well okay so yeah yeah mark th this was this was a blast let me ask you what's what's sort of emerging for you i mean you're 55 you're young as hell. You got the world in front of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. What are your plans um, like? Yeah. So a couple of things. I'm I'm kind of at a crossroads. Yeah, I'm definitely leaving my corporate job within probably six months. Um, when my daughter graduates high school and goes off to college, then I'll you know kind of be a lot more free. So I'd like to still give back to society by helping people. And of course, if I could make a living doing that, that'd be great. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know if there's enough people to, to, you know, that are that interested in Dallas. I love the study of blood. Um, that could be next in my education. Um, I could pull blood samples and analyze them. Um, I'm also actually negotiating right now with a restaurant that's for sale. It's an Italian restaurant. And even though it wouldn't be as healthy as I would want, I would still implement some healthier options. So could be in a restaurant owner um, in the next couple months. That's, you know, in front That's of cool. me. But um, yeah, th those are the two main things. Um, and then on social media, I try to challenge people. And, and a lot of people cry and tattle and report me. But um, I kind of want to end on this is, is this is my, like my biggest message out there, especially young people. There's no such thing as fat shaming. That's we all know that's a made, recently made up term and word, but it doesn't even make sense. Shame is a feeling. Look up, look it up. There's there's a hundred different places you can go for definitions. They all vary, but they're pretty consistent on shame. It's a feeling of remorse that you get based on enlightenment of knowing you're doing something wrong. And I can't make anyone feel anyway. I could call five large people fat. One would laugh. One would cry. One would try and punch me. One would just walk away. And one would say, that's really interesting. You're right. I am fat. I'm not big boned. I'm not thick. I'm not curvy. Those are all. Yeah. Words. There's all these substitute words. Yeah. nowadays. No, you're not. You're fat. And, and Goggins talks about it. Goggins says, if you're dumb, you're dumb. You should acknowledge that so you can study harder and get better. And I tell people, if you're fat, you're fat. If you're unhealthy, you're unhealthy. You, just because people don't weigh 300 pounds doesn't mean they're healthy. I know people that smoke, they drink too much, they eat McDonald's, and they're on all kinds of meds for their blood and cholesterol and, and on and on. So you have to admit it. And the analogy I give people is if I come over to your house and um, you say, oh, man, I just made this delicious all natural organic blueberry pie. I know how you are about natural organic, but it's, it's, it's all natural organic and it's a blueberry pie. And I said, yeah, I, I really can't taste much. So no, thanks. And you go, wait, wait a minute. You can't taste anything. Uh, are you running a fever? And I go, yeah. What are you a fever shamer? Are you a fever a phobe? Yeah. And you so go, and you go, no, I just, you can't taste anything and you have a fever. You might have COVID. 
I don't want to get it. I don't want my family to get it. That there's nobody would do that, right? And I wouldn't put any anybody else in harm's way by by ignoring those symptoms. I would say, wow, I got to go get a test. I got to go see a professional, and I got to get healthy. And being unhealthy or overweight is the exact same thing. So by people just saying, well, no, I'm thick. I'm I'm. Uh, there's that one singer. She calls herself uh, Lizzo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Something. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are people just making excuses and deflecting accountability. Um, and people yeah. say, well, mind your own business. I am. Obese people raise everyone else's health care cost. Obese people are, and I've got the stats on my Instagram, are like 40% more likely to die from COVID. So I care about you. I don't want you to die. So I yeah. am running my own business. Plus, this is my side profession. Maybe one day it could be my full-time profession. I'm doing it because I care. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to call people fat and make them feel bad, but if no. somebody is fat and unhealthy and it's been 10 years and their doctor's worried about them, their loved, one, loved ones are worried about them. It doesn't do any good to say, I'm just big bone and I have bad genes. No, you don't. You have bad rationale and I can help you. And I always, always offer people and I'll, I'll put this out there. I'll offer the first three people that contact me after show. I'll help them completely free. I will just sit. I will talk to them. I'll tell them what not to eat. If they know their blood type, I'll give them a whole diet. First three people, I'll help them for free. I hope people hit me up and you can leave my contact information. All right, I'm writing that down. Yeah. But I'm shocked at how many people, I'll put hits me up because they don't want to get uncomfortable. And this is what I tell my kids. I've told them this with stuff. Studying with, it doesn't matter, cheating, uh, diet, uh, um, dating, short-term gratification leads to long-term frustration. Short-term frustration leads to long-term gratification. So that short-term gratification of eating junk food and calling yourself thick and, and telling people like me, you're a fat shamer, shut up, is going to lead to long-term frustration. If you would start walking and do a few sit-ups and go eat more fruits and vegetables and drink more water, that short-term frustration your brain feels would, would be nothing compared to the long-term benefits that you would realize after you change those habits and acknowledge just accountability. Yeah, and I think nowadays, I mean, we're basically talking about avoiding the victim's mentality, which Gavin's yes. always talked about. Yes. But, but also don't become so susceptible to all the bullshit around you. Be intentional, especially on, on apps like TikTok, Instagram. Be intentional of how you design your algorithm, what content you're consuming. Uh, that, that's really my biggest suggestion. And read. People, people my age don't, they they don't, don't read, read books. I know. I know. No. Books are amazing. Yes. Yeah. And there's a ton of info out there. And I, I think it's really important. Um, I mean, I know, believe me, I was in my 20s once and, it, and it's nice to consume the latest, greatest, freshest. But that came from something 100 years ago. And if something worked 100 years ago or 200 years ago, I'm all for it. There's there's enough evidence for me. You know, if somebody says uh, whatever, you know, I'm on the avocado diet. Well, how long has it been around? Oh, three months. Nah, not enough evidence for me. But if somebody says fruits, yeah. vegetables, meditate, nature walks, filtered water, yada, yada, occasional clean protein, no more than six ounces at a, at a, at a, of a serving uh, per, per meal, then great. I'm sticking with that because that's been around for hundreds of years. That's the, basically the Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean yeah. lifestyle. Hey, Mark, where, where can people find you on, on Instagram? They can find me. Yeah, Instagram is um, Rock and Roll Health Coach. So it's Rock and then the letter N, Rock and Roll Health Coach. Um, that's my main one. I think I've got one on TikTok, but I hardly ever use it. I saw somebody's TikTok handle the other day and it said, too old for TikTok. And I said, oh, that's a good handle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, mainly Instagram. Um, you know, they can email me at Fit Formula Training for you. So Fit Formula Training and then the number four letter U at gmail.com. Um, and I'd be happy to help anyone. Like I said, it's, uh, that's really my intent. I, I may, I may seem intense. I may seem, um, slightly non-compassionate if that's even a word, but, uh, um, 
it's frustration because there is so much knowledge out there and it's so easy. It, it really is. It's not that difficult. I mean, I, I, uh, you and I talked on the phone about pain and pleasure. When I drive past Dairy Bucks and McDonald's and Sick fil a there's, there is zero pleasure that comes into my head about, Oh, let me get a, a fake pumpkin spice latte. Let me get those, those, toxic chicken nuggets with like 40 ingredients in it. By the way, I think Sick fil has 14 ingredients in their French fries. That, I, all I have is pain. Why would I want 14 ingredients that were fried in my body? That, so it's, it's, it's about pain and pleasure. It's not about pros and cons. So the pain is, is, is the bad health and these people trying to brainwash us and, and get our money, which is all they're after. And the pleasure is, for me is saying, no, I'm not eating that garbage. And nope. everyone can find their own pain and pleasure. And I'd be happy to help people find their own pain and pleasure. Yeah. And let me reiterate, you said the first three people uh, from this show to contact you, you said you do it entirely for free. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Wow. My pleasure. Awesome. Mark, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you.